Hello and welcome to the Mobile Game Dev Playbook. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. This is a podcast all about what makes a great mobile game, what is and isn't working for mobile game designers, and all of the latest trends. I'm John Jordan, and uh, joining me today, we have uh, two experts. We have uh, Erno Kieski, who is the uh, Chief Game Analyst at Game Refinery by Liftoff. How's it going, Erno? Hi, hi, John. It's going great. How are you? Good. Yes, good. Good to have you back. And uh, you. very excited. We, we have uh, we have Sonia Skrogland, uh, who is a Game Analyst at Game Refinery by Liftoff, uh, specializing, at least in today's episode, on, uh, on Japan. So first time on, Sonia. Are you excited? I'm very excited. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Good, good. Always good to have have, have some, some some new blood on there. So, um, in this episode, we're going to be talking um, about seasonal events in in free to play mobile games. So, um, we spend a lot of time talking about live ops, and and um, there's lots of and collaborations and that sort of thing. We've done that sort of recently in some of our episodes. Uh, seasonal events are, I guess, a a subset of that, uh, and come with their own sort of interesting um sort of challenges and interesting opportunities um so th that's what we're going to focus on today and erno you're going to sort of kick us off you've been looking at this in in some detail so so what do we need to think about from a high level when we think about seasonal events in free-to-play mobile games yeah sure so we start off by just looking at like what what events we have and and we if we especially nowadays more and more you know global games totally global from different cultures and so on so there are like almost some kind of seasonal event going somewhere all the time. So of course there's the big ones, you know, uh, especially for the Westerns, you know, Christmas, New Year, uh, Halloween, th those kind of events, which are like classically the big ones. But nowadays, if you look more and more of these games, there are like some kind of event running, some kind of seasonality that can be utilized and tapped into a specific, uh, specific topic. So a lot of, lot of, you know, uh, places to kind of like, uh, uh, dig from or like uh, get inspiration or like use as a part of your framework. But then if we go to the actual implementation side and, and how these events are, if we look at seasonal events, like John already mentioned in the intro, it's pretty much like many games, especially in the West, they are not necessarily in that sense, somehow like super special or separate from your like games, actual event framework. So. The most common cases are that there's like a suitable, you know, seasonality for a specific event type that you have running in your game or you, you have, you know, a, event loop that you are using or specific type of events that are constantly on. But then now the skin, the team of the event is just concerning the whatever the season is at the moment. So if we start from like really high, high level of what kind of a events especially now talking about in the western uh, point of view first so usually the kind of like the most simplest one uh, is just to, you know changing your ui uh, to represent you know seasonal active uh, festivities i don't know like during christmas time you have your menu is there's winter and some like santa claus uh, somewhere or stuff like that the the kind of like the most simplest uh, format of somehow you know connecting the current season, current vibe, what is going on in the world, so to speak, into your game as well. Then the kind of like maybe the next step from there is just offering, you know, event related offers. So you have IAP offers bundles that are basically the U, the, the kind of like the UX of that bundle or UI of that bundle is done with the kind of like a specific seasonality. And there might be, depending on the game type, there might be some, you know, uh, different, for example, I don't know, skins that are now like Halloween themed as an example. And then I would say the third step from there is the kind of like the proper event, so to speak. So there are actually some playable content, whatever tasks, rewards, and usually all of these previous kind of like aspects, having offers, having the UI changes and stuff like that are uh, part of that. I would say that is the kind of like the, the basic way uh, that these events are run. Uh, and then if we start to look at a little bit more than in the depth of kind of like a, what kind of events there are, I would say the most common nowadays is this podcast's favorite term, uh, favorite thing is paddle passes. And if we look at the modern mobile game market, the most common way to bring, especially on the casual market side, how to bring seasonality is that they are teaming uh, that season's one month paddle pass with the specific you know, winter team, Christmas team, New Year team, Lunar New Year uh, team, whatever. Your 
uh, Battle Pass season is now themed with with that specific one. And a lot of these, like Gardenscapes, Angry Birds, Dream Blast, Redecor, Klondike Adventures, just to name a few, that that's how they kind of like it, uh, uh, use the seasonality. And then, for example, if the game has a skins, it might have a, like one cosmetic item uh, regarding uh, that uh, theme and seasonality and so on. And then kind of like the same mentality goes to the all of the other different types of events that you have running in your game. So, of course, this depends now so heavily on the subgenre type of a game you have. But if you look at especially casual market as an, as an example, a lot of the Western market, US market especially, are based on uh, casual games and puzzle games and st- so on. So you have your common event types there. As an example, I would give... Uh, the scapes games and these kind of like a match three meta games. One of the kind of like common event types is to have these currency events, so to speak. So they are that that you just play your you know usual levels. You earn an event currency, which then you can use to purchase event items from the store, and then you know use those to decorate your home or garden or that meta layer that you have in the game. Really, really common way to kind of like bring uh, seasonality. Yeah. In, into the games and then another one you know you might have a separate event area or like island with a kind of like a seasonal team this sometimes in match three games with those kind of meta especially the merge three games like over merge and uh these type of a games where you have a like a area that you are building then often how they run their events is that you have a separate event economy separate event island and then that is you know christmas island for example for that period and you use that and then for example idlers are one genre that how they operate live uh, live ops or live events the most common way is to have a, like a separate idler economy which is kind of like totally separated from your main progression economy but you have an event island and now okay now we have a new year uh, island and so on so i would say those are like like some of the you know key ways but i would say in the west the most common and uh common way to bring seasonality is to kind of like adjust you know reskin utilize your already existing event frameworks and event types that you are running in the game and then just to be honest uh use the seasonality to you know highlight that see uh the battle bus season or highlight that uh, specific type of an event there's all this stuff going on in these games already and they always sort of need to have this sort of cadence of of change going on there and and, and actually you know over time it doesn't make sense to to put seasons as part of that and sometimes you have sort of these sort of ip collaborations as well they can be all, all, all sort of mixed up i guess we're getting a bit more detail about exactly sort of what seasonal events sort of Maybe to sum up better than others. I'll talk a bit about that. But I mean, Tonya, um, how how has that worked in Japan? Because Japan is sort of you know in, in in the history of sort of gaming has been very very focused on on mobile live ops. That's sort of where where a lot of that those sort of um, best practice and stuff c- came from. Obviously, Japan has a very different sort of calendar <laughs> and probably has loads of events that I, I've never even heard of. So, um, can you give us a sort of flavour of, of what sort of seasonal events look like um, for the Japanese market and, and 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 which are some of the sort of bigger events? So uh, there are a couple of uh, differences to the Western market, obviously. But there's uh, we do see a lot of the same type of stuff that Erno was talking about, like uh, utilizing an existing framework, and then sort of just uh, putting on um, the the seasonal skin on everything that you're doing already in your regular events. But um, in addition to that. Uh, There are a couple of differences, I think, and uh, the major points, I think, are one, as you said, that the major holidays uh, are quite different. Uh, There are uh, some of them are like completely unique or unknown to most of the Western world. Uh, and some, such as the new year is is uh, the same as everywhere, but um, I mean, New Year's is obviously uh, celebrated everywhere, but uh, the tr- traditions linked to that are quite different. And uh, then another thing is that the um, the biggest events uh, in general in the Japanese market, I feel, are uh, focused around these uh, big holidays. And the uh, the biggest ones are the New Year's. And then in Japan, Golden Week. And these are two 
holidays where people are uh, uh, they have like their centralized holiday holidays so to speak so everybody has time off from school and work and this time off is is very precious and rare and uh and it's um it's it's pretty easy because it's so centralized it's pretty easy to to focus your uh event and all of your um uh resources as a developer on those um those uh uh periods because you will uh get sort of uh centralized revenue from them also because a lot of people have free time and they will they will be playing and they are also expecting that there is going to be a big event during golden week and they're already used to this this um like annual big seasonal events can you explain what golden week is and and, and where when in the year it is of course yeah <laughs> so so golden week is um a series of like uh, individual uh um free days or days off and uh like public public holidays and they are um somewhere it changes a little bit by the year i think but it's somewhere between the end of april and uh beginning of may so it's about a week's uh national holiday can i ask because i, I don't know either to be honest like where does it come from like what's the you know heritage of of college like why they are celebrating as i said these separate um like individual days that each have a a different um cause to to celebrate one is i think children's day and and so on so so it's like a cluster of uh small national holidays it's an interesting point you you brought up there which is um i guess why why seasonal days are um you know important um for for for, for all sort of games as a service to sort of think about because um they are i mean some of them not so much i guess some, we'll talk a bit about halloween i mean halloween is, is just sort of a, a cultural event that sort of over the last you know 20 years sort of moved from north america to become very much a global sort of um uh event but then you do have these very um these, these more i guess kind of embedded into society where people actually are on holiday um, and that's sort of a key thing i guess big four games because generally when people are on a holiday they have more free time which means they have more time to play games which actually means that that, that that's sort of a key sort of um financial opportunity to to generate more money off your players because your players are aren't at work and maybe they are actually sort of sitting around with their younger children they're sitting around in boring family environments going this is really boring yes. <laughs> i don't want to be here so so they're playing games more so this is sort of interesting um sort of uh monetization sort of sort of aspect to seasonal events that you don't that you can you can get i suppose from live opt in general but these are actually sort of quite big opportunities aren't they to to, to really be able to um get people spending and then maybe they've saved up money and if it's like a like a the holiday season so i suppose it's always like was it on sort of boxing day you always this massive spike of of new iphones or new devices coming on board and people spending them it's sort of, sort of quite interesting and that's i guess why game developers need to be doing it because if they're not doing it then they're competitors are the fact everyone does it is probably probably no one gets a competitive advantage from it but if you're not doing it you're definitely sort of losing out there yeah and i would say it's also quite interesting uh, especially i would say like i mentioned most of the games that are big in west they seem to be you know following just the framework and it's it's quite you know of course it's in terms of resources it's it's ma- ma- makes all the sense uh but uh especially those games that are highly engaged like actually when you're playing the game you need to be highly engaged and 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 you actively have to play the game and there's no you know that kind of a grind so uh, just an example that comes to my mind is you know Genshin Impact which is this like massive action rpg game that doesn't have any you know automati- automation options and so on and then when tying to this that like what areas of the year people have the most time and against the impact always has the easily the biggest uh, events uh, they always have a big event but like the always the biggest event of the year at least a couple past two years now the game has been live have been actually during the summer and that's the you know the biggest event the most you know content uh, they always bring bring a lot of content there it's crazy the live ops anyways but the kind of like a spike the biggest spike of uh, stuff to do always happens actually 
during the summer when people are on on holidays. I guess we have these ones. We mentioned sort of Chinese New Year, which is a bit different to Western New Year, sort of like a, like 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 a month out. Um, but those, are, I guess, people know how to deal with those. Um, do we, can there be too many seasonal events? I mean, I guess if you're a Chinese game, you're probably going to go for the Chinese New Year as, as a seasonal event. Do we know of any games, you know, if you did New Year, like the, say, Western New Year and then Chinese New Year, would that be, would those be too close to each other? Would you sort of, is there only so many seasonal events you can do, do you think? Um, with all the other stuff that's going on in games as well. Well, I, I, I can start, Sonia can uh, continue from there. But like, I think especially, you know, it's been interesting to see, especially the Lunar New Year, uh how is i would say it's kind of goes also a bit hand in hand at least i don't know from my point of view here in finland like lunar new year wasn't like outside of games wasn't a that big of a thing you know i don't know five six years ago but if you know nowadays look there are a lot of celebrations even in uh, you know finland in helsinki there are like lunar new year new year and you can see it in the kind of like the in the city and so on you can see it much more than what you used to be so uh, i think it kind of like also goes hand in hand that these events become more and more relevant or like visible also in the games in the in in the different you know ge- geographies and, and and so on so at at least lunar new year is one of the bigger ones i in my, in my opinion it's definitely kind of like and it's almost is almost all the games nowadays have some kind of a Lunar New Year event. But but yeah, like mentioned, there are so many different ways and something is always going on somewhere in some culture. So a uh, lot, lot, to, lot to choose from, for sure. From the uh, Japan team, we we often sort of like joke about it, how it, it seems like the um, the Japanese will grasp on any any possible possibility to to celebrate or like give a give some kind of offer or give logging bonuses or something and we joke about this like half year anniversaries or quarter year anniversaries of the game so at least in the in the japanese market it's um it feels like um the the uh, the the users are used to or are expecting these like spikes in content and they are expecting uh things to uh be like implemented seasonally or um as as in in event format that's the way i feel so i in my opinion uh from the experience on the japanese market i don't think there can be too many events the japanese market is very uh it's just yeah it's, it's very sort of focused on that on those sort of um uh that's all that's all frequency of events isn't it i wonder going back to actually what you were saying Erno, is 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 maybe for games the one the sort of the seasonal events that work really well and grow over time are ones that have sort of obvious sort of cultural resonance and that, that can be sort of um sort of demonstrated in games so chinese new year or the chinese chinese lunar new year is because it's every year every year it changes as a different animal you have quite a strong you know this is the year of the whatever it is ox tiger rat it's a different theme every year, whereas sort of Christmas is difficult because Christmas is basically Father Christmas and snow, which is every year, so every year the same. Yeah, we know what it is, but it's not necessarily very exciting um, in a way that's sort of a, a different sort of animal um, for, for, for the Chinese New Year. Good point in that sense, especially if you think about like we're talking about games anyways, and then you need to think about different themes and d- different ways to, you know, create the event or make it, you know, interesting or make, you know, different types of skins or whatever. Like with the Chinese New Year, you have, you know, you can make that year it's the ox, ox skins for your characters or that another year is rat skins and, and so on. So it, it especially that one, it kind of like a suits well uh, as a kind of like an event for actually like mobile games. So Halloween clearly works well in sort of thematically for lots of games as well, because it has... Um has its own color scheme but then there's quite a broad mix of stuff you can do within halloween also you have if you have pumpkins and stuff but it has ha- has you know quite a range of sort of characters you could be putting into games and so any sort of game with sort, sort of uh, combat elements or, or stuff like that i mean yeah, obviously even in match three games you could have do that it sort of w- works out well and i think that's sort of again one of the reasons that that you have these sort of local events that sort of work out that work really well globally um because they're so flexible in how you how you can do them whereas um there's no, another one we had here so um maybe up for discussion i think i think it's something to talk about here but you know it's something like april fool's day is sort of culturally sort of quite interesting but if you said 
what, what does April Fool's Day look like? Then there's not any obvious thing we would say, would there? We, we, it's quite hard. It's quite hard to implement April Fool's Day in a in a game. That's true, but there are actually we actually I think Oster Sonia some some of our team wrote a, even actually a blog post about different implementations uh, for April Fool, and it's a, it's a kind of like an event that allows you know usually the the events are not big, but it allows you know do some really weird wild stuff because the day is like that like you need to you know fool someone uh, in a different uh, type of type of way and that gives a kind of like a creative freedom for that one day which is quite quite interesting it's not so restrictive maybe like like the christmas that oh, okay it's always that you know snow and santa like you mentioned one thing that came to mind about this was that um as you said it's it's difficult to say what april fools looks like so there aren't these like material um, traditions or like objects that you can build the event around. But uh, uh, my my sort of third point from the differences from the the east is is this material side and the like very rich uh, material and concrete traditions um, uh, that people associate with this. Uh, holidays and events there's there's a lot of like um things that people uh do in real life or um use in real life like a lot of objects that you can um utilize to build a completely separate event area based on so um i feel that uh in the east this is this is maybe one one reason why um why they tend to do this more like they tend to um actually build more unique playable content around the the big events and one example of this was um this like um fireworks festival which is um uh it's, it's like a, a tradition in August where people go to their um, local village area and they enjoy um, like a, a fireworks spectacle, maybe organized by the city. And this is in real life. And people, uh, it, because it's in August and it's very hot, so people dress in yukatas and that's the uh, traditional Japanese summer clothing. And, uh, and, uh, Part of the tradition is that the the community comes uh, becomes very uh, active, and they have these um, like booths where you can buy uh, food, like seasonal food, or uh, where you can play small games like fish, small items from a fake pond, or whatever. And then um, at the end of the evening, you you uh, gaze at the fireworks together with your friends and family so it's already there's a lot to do uh in real life and a lot to buy and a lot to um uh, uh use like as in in material objects so those are maybe easier to uh then transform into an event space with all these details and the the yukatas work as skins obviously or accessories or whatever it's interesting you mentioned sort of fireworks there because it in the, in the uk um you know, we have sort of bonfire night or, or, or guy forks which is just sort of after halloween so it's sort of one of these interesting ones where it used to be quite big in the in the uk and still in various places is but but sort of halloween sort of overshadowed it and, and it was sometimes but equally if there's a uk-based game that sort of you could imagine with sort of V for Vendetta and that sort of look of, of sort of um, how that sort of played into culture, there is actually an opportunity there. So, so I guess as some of these, some of these ones, as we have these sort of cultural um, sort of seasonal events that everyone in the world sort of knows that still provides the opportunity for people to use some of these sort of more, more local ones, but, 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 but use that as a sort of a um, differentiation to other games because, because other people, I mean, obviously the problem there is that would work well for a UK market, which is fairly small, but would people, in North America know about Guy Fawkes Night. So I guess it's sort of um, trying to see, trying to sort of play around to see how that works with your game and, and what your audience is. But another thing that brings me on to is, a lot of these can, I think, be powerful for retention monetization of existing audiences. Do we think these are useful for gaining new audiences? Because I guess with collaborations, that's clearly a thing where 
you're, you're bringing in a new IP and you can use that to market the existing game and bring in new people because obviously you always need to be bringing new people into a game. Do we think seasonal events sort of work for that or because all games are doing them, it's sort of, yeah, it's very hard to, to get a competitive advantage there. What do you, what do you think, Ernie? I guess like in the big picture is probably like that. It's not, the, you know, it's quite a bit different uh, from, you know, in that sense, like collaborations, like you mentioned. But then like, like like mentioned in the earlier uh, discussion that like there are more and more of this diversity of different culture cultural you know seasons that you bring to your game and i don't know let's say you would have the uh, ramadan for example ramadan event and then you are a person who celebrates that and you see that okay this game is actually you know it's including uh, that as part of their event framework and for example i you know that uh, brawl stars from supercell is really you know widely bringing different seasonal events and different cultures and and showcasing also that so it, to certain audience it, it might help you know to kind of like increase that uh, sense of belonging so to speak or like especially if, if it's a game i don't know like especially living abroad and then your you know seasonal event is uh, you know celebrated also in the u.s version of the game so for sure uh, i would say to some extent but but uh, i don't think the kind of like a uh, impact or the way to use it for for new user acquisition is not as as big as for collaboration for example i guess it depends a little bit on the game so there's certain games i mean one that comes to mind is sort of subway surfers that has has that has those sort of every month it sort of changes its location so they could you know they if you already have that sort of sort of vibe going on, then you could play into seasonal events, and, and that becomes another marketing thing because you could you could imagine you know, different things that other games would do. Rio Carnival, you can imagine, oh, we go going to Rio and doing yeah. You know, so you could, it, it does work, but I guess that's harder to do, and it's more specific on the on the actual game game title. Um, Sonia, do you, I mean, are they, it's kind of funny you, you sort of said in, in in Japan there can't be too many seasonal events, but in general, do we is the sort of success of these events? Do we think you know? It, there can only be so many, really, because there's they, all these other collaborations, all these other sort of limited edition events going on there. So, so um, are we getting to sort of sort of peak seasonal events in games, or is there, is there, is that is that being too pessimistic? Some seasons where there are uh, seasonal events back to back, such as like uh, if you think about Christmas, uh, it might start already like with Halloween in the um, autumn, and then trans. Uh, transform into Christmas already uh, quite early on. I think many Christmas events are are very long lasting. And then uh, sh- straight after that comes New Year's. And uh, the then uh, depending on the on the year, the lunar New Year isn't so far behind. So maybe winter is 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 um, the time of the year when they're uh, there's holidays back to back, but there's there's also potential to 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 have the events back to back, and people are probably expecting that also. But then maybe summertime, people have other stuff to do as well. Yeah, and I, I guess you know what I talked about, like in the way beginning about the different levels of event that you can have, and how different companies use the different seasonal events to different degrees of like events and so on so if you have a you know i don't know a big christmas and christmas event or new year event or something and then but for smaller seasonal uh stuff like uh, for example i don't know what could be october fest or something like that then you just have a you know and uh, you know iip offer iip bundle for that like not that you know big of a uh, event and that kind of you know tying to different stuff and that's i think like brawl stars for example what i mentioned earlier uh, they well they have might have you know a specific skin for a smaller smaller seasonal stuff uh, but then they have proper events for a christmas and play playable mode for like a christmas mode and stuff like that so you know different variety of like how deep your events and how deep seasonal stuff you are uh, like building uh, for different different types of uh, events probably gonna need you know a testing and and just checking out and trying out that okay is this you know resonating uh, for my audience uh, this type of a seasonal event or is it not or should we you know uh, just have an offer on it or so, some something like that as an example and then also when we looked at um collaborations and seasonal events together um 
it seems that some of the examples that we found were um, examples where there was this bigger seasonal event, such as Christmas, for example, and then a smaller collaboration put together with that, which uh, uh, had a shorter duration, but which is probably sort of like utilizing the the uh, users that are already there because of Christmas or might be people might come to to the game to play the collaboration and then uh, continue the longer lasting Christmas event. Good. Uh, I have to say the one thing that does really know about seasonal events, mainly about Christmas ones, is, is when you have a Christmas event and then it's still mid-January and basically like it's the Christmas skins are still there. And it's like, no, it's not Christmas anymore. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe that's just me. Well, there is some that, yeah. I, 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 and it's the same, like, I don't know, right? especially like Sonia mentioned that, you know, coming from Halloween, it's already, you know, Christmas events start. But to be honest, if you look, especially, you know, start dates, if you look in the real world, you know, shops are starting to play Christmas songs some shops really really early so <laughs> yeah you know exactly mirroring real life lovely good well thank you uh very much uh erno and uh, sonia for your expertise thank you thank you and thank you sonia for coming on for the first time i, ho I hope, hope you enjoyed it so uh, come back definitely um, thank you <laughs> thank you to you uh, for uh, watching and listening uh however you have been consuming the podcast remember every episode we are talking uh, about the mobile games industry the biggest single uh part of it of the uh, 200 billion dollar annual mobile uh, annual games industry i should say um and it is the most sort of fascinating area um really fast moving some of these enormous billion dollar games uh, global uh, in in audience um and uh, really fascinating so i hope you subscribe uh, to the channel uh, and come back next time to see what we're talking about see you next time <laughs>